Alright guys, so this is the last video for chemical equilibrium where we're going to study the effect of temperature towards the position of equilibrium. Where we're also going to study quantitatively on how equilibrium constant can be calculated by using Van Hove equations. Now, Haber process is widely applied in industry to prepare ammonia in a large scale. So the reversible equation is described below where we have nitrogen react with hydrogen to give ammonia. So this will the W change for this reaction is negative 92 kJ per mole. Now since the reaction is reversible, separating them will mix the reaction to become, so in the sense of forward reaction, so N2 plus 3H2 give 2 NH3, so delta H will be negative 92 kJ per mole, where this reaction can also be looked in the angle from the backward reactions. So if backward reaction, 2 NH3 give N2 plus 3H2, so since forward is endo, F, sorry, forward is exo, backward is endo. So uh, you have a net positive 92 kJ per mole. Now what is the significance of the uh, enthalpy change of the reactions in Lee Chatelier's principle of prediction of the effect of temperature towards the position of equilibrium? So based on Lee Chatelier principles, it is stated that when temperature increases, so the system will respond to decrease the temperature by shifting to the direction which decrease the temperature, hence an endothermic path. And conversely, if the temperature decreases, system will respond to increase the temperature by shifting to the direction of increasing temperature, hence an exothermic path. So by referring to the examples above, Forward reaction, since forward reaction is exothermic while backward reaction is endothermic, when temperature increases, equilibrium will shift to the left since backward reaction is endothermic. So during the introduction of this chapter, we have deduced that equilibrium constant is expressed as uh, the following, where we have uh, Kc is equal to concentration of NH3 squared over concentration of N2 times uh, H2 cubed. So as equilibrium position changes, okay, the rate constant will also change accordingly. So for the example above, if equilibrium shifts to the left, rate constant will increase and cause the equilibrium constant K1 to decrease. So in other words, increasing temperature will also change the equilibrium constant of a chemical equilibrium. So this is a general comparison between endothermic and exothermic process, whereas in exothermic process, the value of a K, now not that, uh, K is directly proportional to the product, yet inversely proportional to the reactant. So since we say that uh, when temperature increases, equilibrium will shift backward, which is towards the endothermic, so you have more and more reactant increase. So as a result, K will decrease as temperature increases. Whereas since forward reaction is endothermic, so we say that as the, uh, when K is directly proportional to the product, inversely proportional to the reactant, so increasing temperature will cause the product to increase. So when product increase, K will also increase. So here are a few examples of how we can determine the position of equilibrium. So for example, if you have two HI give H2 plus I2, the process is endothermic, factors alter, temperature increase. So equilibrium will shift to the right since uh, forward reaction is endothermic. So rate constant will also increase, but equilibrium constant will also increase. As for the second example, H2O2 give H2 plus IO2. So in X, if exothermic, so temperature increase, equilibrium will shift to backward. Since forward is exo, that means backward is endo. So equilibrium will shift to the left. So uh, see, however, as temperature increase, rate constant will increase. Uh, however, equilibrium shift to the left indicates that more reactant is formed, therefore equilibrium constant decrease. So third reaction is uh, CH4 plus 2O2 gives CO2 plus H2O. Reaction is exothermic. So decreasing temperature will cause equilibrium to shift to the direction of exothermic, which is towards the forward reactions. So equilibrium shift to the right. However, since temperature decreases, rate constant and decrease, and since equilibrium shift to the right, product increase, therefore Kc will also increase. Fourth examples, when you have two NO2 give uh, N2O4, the reaction is endothermic, so um, temperature decrease. So when temperature decrease, equilibrium will shift to the position which is to shift to the left. And so when shift to the left, rate constant decrease as temperature decrease, and since shift to the left means that you form more product, therefore equilibrium constant will also decrease. 
if you have N2O5, give 4 NO2 plus O2. The forward reaction is exothermic. So forward reaction exothermic means that equilibrium will shift to the endo, which is the backward reaction. Therefore, equilibrium shift to the left. So as temperature increase, rate constant increase, however, as equilibrium shift to the left, product decrease, reactant increase, therefore equilibrium constant decreases. And finally, for 2CO, give CO2 plus C. The forward reaction is endothermic. As temperature increase, equilibrium will shift to the endothermic, which is toward forward reaction. Therefore, it shift to the right, so increasing the rate constant and also the equilibrium constant. So this is more towards the qualitative predictions, uh, predictions where uh, equilibrium constant can change accordingly. So a more quantitative method is used to deduce the changes equilibrium, which is by using a Van Hoff equation. So Van Hoff equation is expressed as ln k is equals to delta h negative delta h over R t plus c. Now, if you uh, if you recall back of the uh, Arrhenius equation, the equation is actually quite resembles to each other. Okay, just that um, Arrhenius equation is used to calculate rate constant and also. Uh, Arrhenius, uh, Arrhenius equation is used to calculate uh, rate constant, whereas this um, Van Hoff is used to calculate uh, equilibrium constant and also a double change of reactions. Okay, so from the equation above, if we were to arrange the equation similar to linear expression where y equals mx plus c, it is expected that a linear gradient can be obtained if the graph of ln k against 1 over t is plot, and from the graph of the gradient of the graph, and w chain of the reaction can be calculated. So for example, consider the reaction of 2SO2 two, two plus O2 give 2SO3. So the Kp value at different temperatures are given below. So um, you have 25 degrees Celsius, 127, 27, 327, 437 degrees Celsius, and Kp is as follow. So you have to recalculate the temperature and calculate the long Kp. So uh, plotting them, so this is the 1 over T, and this is the long Kp. So you plot the graph of uh, long Kp against uh, temperature, 1 over temperature. So this is the gradient that you will get. Okay. So now from the gradient, take any two points to calculate the uh, uh, double change of reactions. So from the table, so from the gradient in here, so two minus negative five over two point four times ten power negative three minus one point eight times ten power negative three. So the gradient is one one six seven. So C gradient is equals to delta H over R. So delta H is one one six times eight point one. So you get 97 kilojoule, negative 97 kilojoule per mole. So this is basically on how we get the uh, equilibrium, uh, the NW change of reaction by using the Van Hoff equations. So, so hence it can be concluded that different temperature NW change will give different gradient of the graph. So for exothermic process, since um, gradient is positive, positive gradient, so our positive gradient is equal to negative delta H over R. So this is expected that your delta H at the end will be equal to exothermic process. And if for endothermic process, if your gradient is a negative gradient, so equals to negative delta H over R, so it is expected that your delta H will be a positive value. So this is the graph of endo and exothermic. Other than using graphical methods, and equation methods can also be used to calculate and double change, uh, and double change of reactions. So, uh, derive when comparing between two different temperatures, you can derive as ln k two over k one equals to delta h over r one minus t one over t one minus one over t two. So that is all that I have for you for chemical equilibria. So, uh, thank you.